We're talking with Tammy Morales, and uh, you are with... I'm with the Housing for All Coalition and also the Seattle Human Rights Commission. Okay. Can you tell the viewers what's going on here? Sure. So uh, we're here tonight uh, having a camp in, camp out. Um, we're here to demonstrate solidarity with our houseless neighbors and to let City Council know that we really feel it's important for them to stop spending resources on sweeping people from one neighborhood to another or one street to another and instead use that funding and those city resources to provide services, to uh, build more shelters and to really start looking at the root of the problem which is that there is not sufficient affordable housing units in the city. Um, and so we're here to support uh, an end to the sweeps and also to support the head tax that a couple of council members have proposed that would uh, allow for an additional revenue source so that we could start paying for the, the services and uh, actually constructing housing for, um, for low-income folks in the city. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on in Seattle? Like, uh, Seattle has the fastest uh, growing uh, rents, housing costs in the country. And uh, there's a lot of investors coming in here buying up properties and not even living in them. They're just buying properties for investment. Mm -hmm. And it's making the uh, housing rates go high, uh, sky high. And so there's a huge homeless problem. And uh, could you maybe talk a little bit about that? Uh, sure. So I. Um I don't have all the information on, on uh, who's investing and how that process works, but I do know that we've got a lot of people who are moving to Seattle. Um, you know, uh, our, our population growth has increased dramatically in the last 10, 12 years or so, and a lot of the folks who are coming in are able to afford um, higher style or higher uh, kind of apartment unit. And so a lot of the production of housing units that's been happening is for that particular market. So, you know, very fancy apartments. Um, and the construction of uh, more modest units and the preservation of existing affordable housing has not really kept pace. And so we have this growing problem where, uh, you know, people who are moving here can afford very fancy apartments. And the people who are already here and the folks who are struggling to stay in the city are really getting pushed out because as, as the number of housing units shrinks, uh, the price goes up. And so that's part of what we are hoping to see here is, is an acknowledgement that we really need to increase the production of housing and we need to increase it not, you know, not more luxury apartments. We really need to increase the production of more modest units for, uh, for lower income people to be able to afford so that they can stay in the city too. I've experienced a lot of problems trying to find housing, keeping work because I don't have housing. That's a major issue that a lot of people are facing is that they're just, uh, they're not able to work because they don't have all their essential needs met. So that's why I'm here today. The line is very, very long. You know, you were living in some uh, uh, shelters, some camps, mm -hmm. right? And there's there's a lot of camps in Seattle, right? Yeah. And but the police are coming in and uh, sweeping them, and they're taking people's possessions. Yeah. And so. Um, I'm here. Well, like it just adds on to the fact that people don't have stable living situations, so they're not able to function in regular society and keep jobs and get to work on time and that kind of thing and get fed and um, that's like we need to fix that problem first and then work on people being able to like be live sustainable lives yeah. plus there's a lot of um, disabled people that don't make that much money that need housing as well and um, like just older folks that can't really work yeah. and so uh, maybe tell the people uh, what happened to you and how did you end up doing this? Um, I have had four jobs in the last year. Um, once I get in, I've, I've been trying to save money, but it's hard. 
Um, I've been getting hotel rooms to like get some sort of comfort every once in a while. Um, and I just have been having a hard time saving money on the streets and keeping work. So yeah. that's why I'm homeless. I mean, how much would it typically cost to move into a place? Uh, it's usually first and last month's rent, so it'd be about three grand to move in. Yeah, and then they want all kinds of fees and everything. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to continue to pay the three grand, the 1500 or more even a month to keep housing. And that's difficult too, when a lot of jobs like are very easy about like letting go, people go. Like, you don't really need a reason to let people go in the state of Washington, so it's very difficult. So, has uh, any of the encampments that you were in ever been swept by the police? Um, I have lived mainly in doorways. I've been asked to leave several times when it's raining in the middle of the night, um, which makes it really difficult for me to wake up in the morning. There's been nights where I've been out in, in the cold and rain and I had to work the next morning and I came into work all tired, of course, because I hadn't slept all night. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've been, I've experienced that problem. Are you worried about safety, you know, if you, if you were in, a, uh, in an encampment? Um, no, encampments make it so it's more safe because there's always somebody on security. There's always somebody looking out. If you're on your, your own with like a few other people, it's like you could get raped, you could get murdered even. There's a lot of people that, like, there's a lot of bad things that happen outside around 3 a.m. and that kind of stuff, so. Yeah. Okay, well thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Everybody, my name is Joe. Um, I currently work in uh, services for houseless folk. But I myself have been houseless, I'm a recovering addict, I have neurodivergence, all, all, all of that, all of that. And uh, I just want to say that it really sucks because it's pretty obvious that this city, really any city, but this city doesn't really give a shit about you if you don't have money and if you don't have legitimacy. And that really sucks because there's a lot of like baseline needs that people have that can really easily be met that are not getting met, but instead, like, the city is f***ing doing all that it can to be amenable to Amazon, and more like companies that are destroying the earth, destroying our interactions between each other with technology, mediating everything. Uh, intense monopoly capitalist companies are, like, buying and selling this city like it's a pie at a f***ing city, you know, town fair type of shit. And that really sucks because it's our lives versus their profit. Like, the ability to sleep indoors, the ability to eat good food, the ability to get necessary medical treatment that lots of other countries offer their citizens for free. We have to fight tooth and nail to get. And in the process, like, people die of exposure, people have to, like, fight like hell just for, like, safe injection sites and other, like, harm reduction uh, facilities that would do a lot of good for those of us who, for whatever reason, are, are not changing, you know, and like, we do what we do, so it's better to make it possible for us to do what we do and get by okay while doing what we do, you know, and at the end of the day, if we're just trying to numb the pain, you know, it's their fucking fault that we're in pain, so, uh, fuck them. But I just, uh, wanted to say, uh, y'all are a bunch of beautiful people, y'all are a bunch of real strong people, I'm glad you're trying to do this, I hope that this event doesn't in any way inconvenience people that kind of need the shelters provided by City Hall and surrounding areas on the daily. Um, you know, I hope that this event is not just symbolic, but it's an actual event of solidarity that makes things better for the people who have to live this reality on the daily. Um, to all of you that have to live this reality on the daily, like, you know, there are some of us who are really in your camp and like in your corner because we've lived it or because we have people we love that have lived it or just because we're f***ing human beings and recognize that everyone deserves dignity and deserves like just like care and kindness and the ability to get by and like the people that would gladly see us dead so that a new condo can go up or see us dead so that they can make more millions that they don't need those people are the f***ing enemy and like at the end of the day, push comes to shove. If they want a war, we'll give them one. But for those of y'all that are not on that militant tip, I just want to send some positivity and let you know that, uh, yeah, like, we're out there. Like, you're out here. Like, let's be together. Let's be kind to each other. Let's stay strong. And hopefully one day all of this 
it will fall apart and we won't have to go to work tomorrow and we'll be able to actually do like healthy, happy things with our lives. So uh, yeah, congratulations for putting this together and you know, just, just being willing to brave like the fascist scum that are up there trying to like talk about how even the meager right to exist that we're clamoring for, we don't deserve. These are the people that enslaved my ancestors. These are the people that exterminated the indigenous folk. These are the people that are destroying the earth right now. And I say like, fuck them. Have a good day, everybody. Um, I'm here because I have seen the city of Seattle do basically nothing to stop the homeless problem. Um, they declared an emergency on homelessness two years ago. And since then, the problem has just gotten worse. They haven't invested in any real solutions and in fact have been spending a lot of money on sweeping the homeless, which actually just pushes them from one place to another. They'll sweep an encampment and there aren't even enough shelter beds for all those people to go to in one night. And shelters aren't a long-term solution anyway. So their solution of spending a bunch of money on pushing people out really is dangerous. It's very toxic. It's harmful to people's psyche when, you know, they live outside. Like a tent is all they have. Um, so I'm here to call attention to that fact and say we need to fund real solutions get people into housing, and the city needs to stop the sweeps, which also they slash people's tents with box cutters. I've seen it. We have video documentation of it. Um, they throw people's stuff away, and one, it's yeah, really right awful. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're talking with Andy here, and uh, could you tell me uh, what you're doing you know, as involved in this project? Uh, so, I'm one of the main organizers for the camp out uh, today of November 1st, 2017 at City, uh, or Seattle City Hall to occupy, to demand, to stop the sweeps and the violent acts that are being taken, uh, taken on against our most vulnerable members of our community, our unhoused neighbors. Uh, you know, I took an oath um, back in 2008 when I joined the military to defend all peoples from um, all forms of oppression. And this is a form of oppression. This is an act of violence. This is class warfare. And I took that oath. And I'm tired of seeing the very people I swore to defend, my own comrades that have been discharged from the military, be swept and told they do not belong in a community that they defended. And so we are here to stand our ground and do the job that our city has failed to do. When uh, two years ago, they declared a state of emergency on homelessness and we've seen 601 sweeps be uh, performed uh, last year that cost the city $24 million when they could have just built affordable housing. And so far this year, 2017, 67 people have died in the street. And so enough is enough. And so if they want to continue doing this, then they're going to have to go through me. You know, my contract ended with the state, but my oath never expired with the people. So that's why we're here, to defend our most vulnerable members of our community and build camaraderie, uh, break through our comfort zones between housed and not housed people, and then our biases around what poverty is. Well, you know, uh, Salt Lake City is, is doing just that, right? They're building these micro houses mm -hmm. and everything. And so they're you know, taking a lot of that money, like you said, and just solving the problem. Yeah. And so that, what do you think's going on here? Why don't they just do that? Uh, because our ruling classes are greedy. Uh, you know, in the military, it didn't matter what your level of productivity was. You were still provided all of your basic needs to be job ready and to reach your full human potential. You know, in the, arm, the military, you had your, your medics, you had infantry, you had um, your chaplain assistants, communications, etc. And each job was a different level of productivity. But at the end of the day, everybody was provided uh, housing based off their needs, not their wants. Uh, you had access to dining facilities at all times to get food. You had clothing that was added on to your six months pay so you can continue to get new uniforms. Uh, when you walked into a medical facility, you had no uh, bullshit uh, 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 insurance forms, no co-pays. You just sign in, get your services. And these are the things that need to be applied out here because these are the very people that we swore to defend. And not to say that veterans and military personnel are less or more valuable, but these are the people that we swore to defend, the working class people, all right? And they deserve to have access to basic needs. I mean, there should be no excuse. It's just greed. Yeah. So, you, you know. Were, you were talking a minute ago about what happened in San Francisco. Yeah, and so. The same thing happened uh, 
you know, that's happening in Seattle. Like this is one of the, you know, fastest growing areas, fastest growing rents. Yeah, a lot of metropolitan areas are uh, are growing in size uh, for you know these big tech companies. Uh, you know what they did down the barrier barrier is essentially the same policies and attacks on the poor communities to drive them out to turn in turn them into giant playgrounds and the city of Seattle is turning into a giant ski resort where working class low income uh, communities are only here to make their coffees uh, build their roads their buildings everything else but we don't belong to live here no 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 this is our city too yeah and you know another thing is that that changes the nature of the town yeah you know, in Seattle uh, I mean uh, San Francisco used to have uh, great bands you know, great art, great uh, everything, mm -hmm. you know, whereas like then it becomes, um, you know, just all these, you know, rich people move in and everything, it changes the whole complexion of the city, which is what's happening to Seattle. Seattle is a very progressive place. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm new here. I'm originally from Texas. I've been here for three and a half years. I'm still getting to know the scene, but... I mean, even where I work at the YWCA over near Ballard, you can see the change just happening down Third Avenue. I mean, uh, these big, uh, you know, companies like uh, WeWork, that's a shared workspace company, uh, only tailors to a lot of big businesses and their workers to have a space to work, but not really to low-income families. I mean, they charge a flat desk rate like at 120 bucks, you know, just to work, and that's ridiculous. So, yeah, it's got to stop. All right, thank yeah. you. Cool. Okay, uh, we're talking with, uh, what's your name? Melissa. Melissa. Um, so, um, you're a social worker, but you're also homeless. That's correct, yes. And, um, I have a master's degree in social work. Oh, so um, how could you, like if you're a social worker, how did you end up homeless? Rent prices, um, it was an unexpected move here, and whenever I came here, I um, was unprepared and didn't really understand the economic system here. As a, I'm from the East Coast, and it's way different a lot with the tech, everything's more expensive here. So um, I wasn't it's prepared. more expensive than the East Coast? Oh, yeah. Well, especially for my state, yeah. I see. Um, so, like, what kinds of problems do you run into trying to find housing? I haven't even started looking for housing yet. I'm too busy trying to find a shower or do my laundry or, I mean, so that I can go to a, jo a job interview, um, have shoes, you know, that I can get around in, get not get picked up by various, you know. Nasty people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh. But you're working and you still, not, still can't find a um, Not now, no. I quit my job and I, um, because I couldn't maintain, I couldn't maintain my case management in such a way that I, that I felt was appropriate whenever I had so much stress in my life, you know? I couldn't handle both things. So I have an autoimmune disorder and whenever I get really, really stressed out, then I'll get sick. My body will just kind of be like, all right, you have to stop, you know? Um, even though I don't want to, so um, I had to. You have to quit one, right? Yeah. The job or the life. So might as well keep the life. Yeah. Um, so you've been living in uh, uh, encampments and stuff mostly. No, I've got a private camp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what? What? What, uh, what are you? Uh, what are you looking forward to? What's your plan? Um, summer. I'm looking forward to summer yeah. <laughs> um, when it's warm. Um, I would love to have an apartment here. I don't think that it's sustainable with with my income. Social workers, people who work in social services don't make anything. And the tech market, comparable, um, comparably, not that I don't love tech, I do. I mean, right on, it makes Seattle what it is and it makes it so that we can all have a beautiful place to live but it also makes it so that we have to move further and further out and can only visit a beautiful place to live. Um, so hopefully, um, I guess, find a nice place in, in out of town, somewhere, Columbia City or um, 
somewhere further out where you can actually afford to live. And so this uh, this is a protest against the house the sweeps mm -hmm. by the cops. Yeah. So have you ever you know had the cops sweep someplace where you were? No, not yet. Been lucky. Yeah. yeah. They don't really mess with you. If you go further out, then they won't mess with you the further and further out. And then they just kind of push it. This is what I understand, having worked in the housing homeless field here. Um, and I know a lot of homeless people. Um, they just keep moving you further and further out. The sweeps keep happening further and further out. They just start messing with you more. And so, uh, so far I've been lucky. I've been out far enough that I haven't been swept. But... And it could happen to anyone. Oh, yeah. It could course. happen to me. Absolutely. Uh, you know, my landlord's trying to raise the rent 200 bucks. And uh, it's, this is the second time within a year. Do you live in a house or do you live in an apartment? A house. Oh, well, see, you're gonna you're screwed anyway because they're going to sell your house so they can build a condo. They're going to sell all the little, the whole block that you live on. It's, it's You can see it. I mean, just drive out of town. Drive down Rainier Avenue and look. It's all, what was a residential neighborhood is now all condos. So let me ask you something. Uh, what are you uh, trying to accomplish here? What, what is it that you want the city council <laughs> to do? Stop sweeps. Um, allow people to pre preferably use the money that they would use to have people sweep the, the streets to provide housing. I mean, to just try to either make it more accessible, uh, more accommodating for people who with mental illnesses and addictions, and or um, build tiny houses. I mean, if you want people to move out of town, then build them tiny houses. Make a little Nicholsville without housing first. Yeah. Make that's a housing do. first Nicholsville. Yeah, that's what Nicholsville doing is not in, uh, housing first. In uh, Salt Lake City. You know, they just decided it's costing them too much money. They just spend the money to solve the problem. They just build uh, tiny houses for people, for temporary housing, you know, until they get back on their feet. But, um, it didn't work that way for me in Utah, but um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm not a Mormon either, so yeah. um, love them. I mean, they were great to me. They were really nice. They're kind of standoffish um, if you're not one of their, their group. But, you know, I mean, they, they have food banks and we stayed at a hostel and that person was really nice and welcoming and it was great. So have you been following what's going on, you know, like in the city council, in the city government? as far as this is going, you know, and uh, do you think that there's allies on the city council? I don't know. I mean, it's hard for me to keep track of things. I'm homeless, so yeah. if I go to the library, then I can access the internet, and then I can, you know, keep up. But as far as access to information, mostly I spend my day trying to get from food bank to food bank to get food, trying to find a place to take a shower, trying to put in resumes. I mean, there's really not a lot for me to, and I don't have a phone, so. Yeah. Well, that costs money just to have a phone. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. Anything that you can do anything with. I mean, I, you can get an Obama phone that will allow you 200 minutes of phone calls um, a month, but you know, it's not, a, you can't access the internet. That's, that's yeah. Wi-Fi, that's, that's the library. Okay, is there anything else that you'd like to say? Yeah. I think Seattle does a lot of things right. I think they have a lot of potential. I think that they could really make this a lot friendlier. Um, change transit laws, you know, allow homeless people a reduced, reduced um, pass. Um, more showers, more laundry. Um, that's about it. Okay, thank well, thank you. Thank you. We are ready to fight. Housing is a human right. Hey, hey, go, go. All the streets have got to go. Science tells us that 60.8% of the homeless youths have been raped, beaten up, and robbed while being homeless. One in three teens will be recruited by a pimp within 48 hours of leaving their home. 
24% of homeless youth report witnessing somebody being sexually assaulted. 70% of homeless youth report experiencing some form of violence. 32% include sexual assault. 97% of homeless mentally ill women will be raped while homeless. According to a study of the homeless and marginally housed, people 32% of women, 27% of men, and 38% of transgender persons have reported either physical or sexual victimization in the previous year. Encampments aren't a place that we're, we're a city of housing first, not encampment first. We must expand our navigation teams. We spend $195 million. That's $16,000 for every homeless child, woman, and man. The results that we have are absolutely atrocious. We need to have an evidence-based uh, evidence based and scientific approach to homelessness, and we need to have to stop wasting all this money and get people inside. Thank you. I'm here in solidarity tonight with the homeless people of Seattle and in Pierce County. 1492, that's when our the first sweep was with the Native Americans. And since then, it's still continuing up to this present night, tonight. And so I would like to ask the audience to stand in solidarity with me with these rights. Thank you. The city of Seattle is a top city, city in this world. So you must find ways to help the homeless. I have friends that are being killed in their camps for no reason, you know, just for being, not having a home. I had a friend last month that got killed in Pierce County, an elderly that was bludgeoned to death. So you must find ways to help the people. Life is sacred. Life is very sacred, regardless what nationality we come from. It's sacred. So please find a way to end this homeless here in Seattle. The chief there behind you on the seal is named after the city. We shouldn't have to live like this. Thank you. My name is Christina and I'm a homeless disabled veteran who lives in my car and attends Seattle Central College. College has helped me with my prior suicide attempts due to my military service. I have had, I wanted to share with you that I have had absolutely no real help in trying to get me out of my vehicle where my caregiver also lives with me because I cannot live alone as a disabled veteran. The, what I'm told when I go to agencies is quit school. School is my dream. I hope to do something with my life and overcome everything <laughs> as a disabled vet. And I need supports with my disabilities because I have a brain injury from the Gulf War era. And, you know, to be told that I need to be out of my van is great, but I need the steps and the solutions and the help to get out of my car and into housing, which is be, I'm being kept there because of the low, low income tax credit from the Reagan era that says full time college students cannot be in low income housing. Thank you very much, and I appreciate allowing me to start. My name is Natalie Lente. I'm the Director of Family Services at Child Care Resources. We are also members of the Seattle Human Services Coalition and Seattle King County Coalition on Homelessness. <coughs> I want to extend thanks to each of you for your support in including our homeless child care program in the current amended funding, funding package. We had a parent scheduled to join us this evening, but due the, to the chaotic realities of living homeless, she was unable to join us. So instead, I would like to read to you a poem written by one of the children served by our program. This child received after school care supported by us. She had five siblings, three under the age of five. The mother and children were homeless due to escaping a DV situation. This poem reflects the child's perception of, of her experience. You see that I have a big family. You think my siblings are disgusting and that we're weird because my mom and dad are separated. You see that I'm quiet a lot when you point and stare. My silence begging you to stop staring, but you don't know me. You would know me if you knew how hard it was to be pointed out as homeless people, or if you knew how I feel hurt sometimes like a caged elephant or giraffe. Or if you knew how my sister and I help each other to do our hair, it takes four hours and hurts so bad. 
or how my sister and I gather our four siblings when they misbehave at the store. You see that I am not what you think. You see that I don't point at you the way you point at me, but you don't know me. You would know me if you knew how I colored butterflies like I'm a famous artist. You knew how I cooked noodles with lemon flavor for my whole family, and I'm only eight years old. I thank each of you for your leadership and for protecting Seattle's homeless children by ensuring, ensuring their access to protective early learning environments. Thank you so much. Good evening, council members. My name is Amy Fleetwood, and I'm here on behalf of Columbia Legal Services and the many clients we serve. I'm new to Columbia, and I work at the front desk. So I'm the one who greets those in desperate need. One of the most recent was a man with cancer, living on a small bit of property with the owner's permission, but driven off by the city because neighbors didn't want an unsheltered person nearby. He would gladly move, but he's in chemotherapy, and he needed to stay near the hospital where he has treatment. At the age of 72, sick and exhausted, he needs somewhere to sleep. This is the face of the homeless I know. Columbia attorneys have repeatedly testified in front of the city council, requesting legislation to stop the removal of those who are homeless from the area in which they have made their home. I'm here as the person who sees those without homes come in our doors. Many are mentally ill. Many are physically ill. Others have just been hit hard by the Seattle economy in terms of housing and otherwise. We have serious concerns about the way the city is accommodating these families and people. Some think the sweeps are working because services have been accepted during the sweeps, but this rhetoric conflates services with a place to live. Consider revenue plans which are commensurate with the vast benefits of running a business in this booming city of consumers, whether it's employee taxes, or other revenue. Forcing people to move and move and move with winter coming on has not been the answer. It wasn't 20 years ago, and it wasn't when the state of emergency was declared. It's time for a change. Hello, City Council. Uh, my name is Ryan Whitney. I'm a member of the executive board of the 43rd Democrats, and I'm speaking on behalf of the 32nd, uh, 43rd, and 36th Democrats. Um, all of those districts have unanim unanimously passed the resolution to support Stopping the sweeps of homeless encampment. And social services. Also, the resolution has been introduced in the 34th district and to King County Democrats as well. And given the unanimous support of our districts, I imagine they will have very high pass rates as well. Instead of sweeps, the city should authorize encampments and fund services that are humane towards homeless community members, improve community health and safety conditions, give access to showers, portable toilets, and laundry, and provide mental health services. The city of Seattle has created a very favorable business environment. Now it is time for those big businesses to pay their taxes to help support the people they have displaced. <laughs> are better than this. And we demand that the city fundamentally alter its approach towards our homeless neighbors. Failure to support human rights of homeless people is failure to support the demands of the people of Seattle. The 32nd, 43rd, and 36th Legislative District Democrats are excited to be a part of the growing Affordable Housing Alliance and the people's right budget movement. And we intend to be here at the next budget hearing. We sweep trash, not people. Hi, uh, my name is Elizabeth Kennedy and I'm a formerly homeless woman. I'm advocating in support of survivors of gender-based violence. Seven months after exiting homelessness, I was sexually assaulted in low-income public housing and after making the difficult decision to report, I was denied prosecution. This was devastating, though not at all uncommon. I had no advocate at the time and no legal representation, and I remained trapped in the twilight darkness of PTSD. Six years later, I entered into counseling with the Harborview Center for Sexual Assault and Traumatic Stress, after which I began night classes at North Seattle College, 
got a job after seven years of unemployment, lost 40 pounds, and began dating. The Harborview Center restored a life to me and allowed me to work again. These services matter, they touch real lives and produce real results. I thank the council for its good work in supporting survivors of gender-based violence, and I stand behind the full portfolio of the Seattle Human Services Coalition recommendations. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Council. Thank you for having me here today. I thank you everyone behind me for being here. My name is Jason. I'm a housing case manager with Catholic Community Services, although I'm here today in my capacity as a private citizen, a renter, and a proud resident of District 2. Sweeps cause more homelessness. Full stop. I know when sweeps occur, I know when sweeps occur because my clients don't show up their appointments. I see a spate of no-shows on my calendar whenever the city decides to do this. When I call up their physical and mental health care providers, I hear, yeah, I haven't seen them in a while. Do you know what happened to them? When I call up their work source person or someone who I've set them up with a job interview for, they've not heard from them either. This is an absolutely backwards policy. And I want to use the few seconds I have left to remind everyone behind me that every single seat on this dais is up in either 2018 or 2019. And you have a choice. You can either care about the con campaign contributions of the bitter white shirts behind me, or you can lose. Hi, I'm Rebecca Deutsch. I'm a software developer and an organizer with 350 Seattle, and I'm here supporting Housing for All and the Homes Tax. Because housing is a human right and a time issue. Large employers must be part of the solution and pay a fair share. Since 2010, when Amazon began expanding downtown, and many large tech employers moved in as well, the price of a Seattle home has increased by 83%, and rents have increased by 47%. And the number of Seattle workers commuting more than three hours a day has increased by 72%. As people are displaced and move further out, these longer commutes contribute substantially to carbon emissions, lower quality of life, and pollution-related health impacts. We need bold investments in city center affordable housing, but we can't do that with our aggressive tax system and the most regressive in the country. Meanwhile, Amazon skirts taxes and claims 61 million in tax breaks from Washington State. The, the homes tax, the head tax, is a tiny fraction of the tax breaks Amazon is claiming. The company and all large companies benefiting from our city infrastructure must contribute to solutions with this head tax. Thank you. Hello, my name is Noah Cantor, and I represent the Seattle chapter of the Tech Workers Coalition. Our membership includes employees at Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Tableau, and the list goes on. The tech industry has been shaping the city of Seattle in very significant ways, bringing jobs, but increasing in income inequality, driving housing prices up to unaffordable levels. The brunt of this impacts those members of our community who are most vulnerable and don't benefit from these companies at all. We believe the Housing for All platform, stopping the sweeps, and the homes tax are the right way forward to help offset the harm that large companies do to the people of this city. Yeah. People are sleeping in the streets while Amazon, Google, Facebook, and others make billions right on City Hall's doorstep. There are those who claim that taxes of any sort, even corporations, are hostile to tech workers. I'm tired of those people speaking on my behalf. disappointed by the city's failure to confront the housing crisis. We believe this tax to be a credible first step. Thank you. My name is Jeffrey Atkinson, and along with my uh, friends here, another member of the Tech Workers Coalition Seattle, I also want to echo our friend uh, Jeff's comment earlier on fully funding the municipal banking study. Um, I was really disappointed uh, to see that left out of the budget balancing package by uh, Budget Chair Herbold earlier this week. Um, it is a small, I think a small ask of $200,000 to fund a study that could have massive dividends um, in Seattle over the long term. I've read that uh, financing projects for affordable home uh, housing projects can often be um, 30 to 40 percent of the cost of those projects. And if we were able to actually fund those our ourselves, we could invest in our own communities while saving huge amounts of money. Thank you. My name is Marlis McConnell, and I'm a mother here in support of safe consumption spaces. The button I'm wearing today carries a picture of my son. His 
name is Andrew Michael McConnell, and he died January 6, 2015, to an accidental heroin overdose. He was only 27 years old. Andrew tried to hide his addiction. He used in public bathrooms and alleys and in the dirty basement of his apartment. To say it saddens me to think about the life he was living is an understatement. And having learned the importance of harm reduction after his death leaves me feeling tremendously guilt. I wish he had had access to a safe consumption space, a place not only to get harm reduction supplies but learn how to use them, a place where medical help, social services, and replacement therapy is available, a place where shame can be lifted and recovery can begin. I believe he would have used a safe consumption space if one had been available, and I think it would have made a difference in his life. Thank you. Um, I encourage all of us as well. I, a couple weeks ago, um, happened to walk through a suite, and it was really hard to watch as somebody who's been in this field for 10 years. Um, it was painful. And I'm not the person being displaced. So I just encourage all of us to ask the question, is this necessary, and how do we get more housing for the people inside? Thank you. Did you know that the city of Seattle funds several thousand dollars of investment in the purchase of tents, sleeping bags, personal items for people who are on the streets? Do you understand that after spending tens of thousands of dollars on those items, they are then thrown in the trash through the sweeps program? I think the lady up here, yeah, the, I think the lady up here who was talking about the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of uh, pet license fees is like twenty dollars. This is some seventy-five thousand animals, who are most of which are not urinating in the toilet, right? Uh, they removed four inches of topsoil from from the field uh, because there were people there, several hundred people, several hundred people, not seventy-five thousand pets. Several hundred people uh, who had urinated on the ground, right? Uh, that is ex incredibly expensive. Six million pounds of trash included medication, yeah. medical devices, people's personal effects, pictures, ID, tents that we had purchased with city money. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Spencer. I'm an Amazon warehouse worker. Uh, one of over 5,000 that live in Seattle and King County. I lived in Seattle beforehand, but Elmer can at 1325 an hour on a flexible schedule that changes every week. As an Amazon worker who is not part of the executive class, earning historically high incomes, I believe it is the duty of this city council to stand up for Amazon warehouse workers. And one way you can help fight for Amazon warehouse workers is taxing the rich and taxing corporations like Amazon who make so much money off our hard labor. Right now, money that should go to us as workers is going to the pockets of Jeff Bezos, now the richest man in the world. So there already is a transfer of wealth, transfer of wealth from workers to the executive class. The tax Amazon and tax big business now affordable housing so all Amazon workers can live in the city instead of making Seattle a playground for the rich. Tax the rich, stop the sweeps in affordable housing now. Hi, I'm Karen Taylor. Lisa, it was good to see you at the Juan Gonzalez thing about how cities can um, be the leaders in making collective liberation happen. So I know you know what's up. <laughs> and now it's time for you to be a part of something powerful. Um, my story is that I am currently housed. I rent a single room uh, from friends, and they basically subsidize me, even though I pay some rent. Right now my parents pay my rent, which is embarrassing for a 35-year-old almost 35. Um, I became disabled a couple of years ago and it's taken me until now to maybe start getting SSDI. Right you now I'm getting $490 a month uh, from SSI. Um, and I'm afraid for my future because I see all the houses getting sold and around me and I'm going to um, have to leave at some point and I'm not going to go to this subsidized place. Uh, I was wondering if my sister could speak as part of my group. Sure. Thank you. Jody, can you have a, a little bit more time? Hi, my name's Susan. I'm a nurse. I've spoken t to you before. Um, it's, I guess the only thing I had to add was that it was pretty scary tonight to see Karen with her, um, like the bag with the tent in it for the solidarity sleepover. Like, these people sleeping on the streets are our family, 
and to watch my sister prepare that bag to like prepare for homelessness, that's not okay. Don't let it be your family that's getting their tent bag ready. Thank you for staying late. It's almost past my bedtime, but I'll be sleeping out front with my siblings. I'm Pastor Kelly Domino, and I'm appointed to Ronald United Methodist Church in Shoreline to serve all the people in my community like you do, housed and unhoused. I'm a white, straight, cis male, U.S. born, educated, employed, housed Christian pastor, and I'm here because I follow a homeless Jesus who is arguably one of the most outspoken socialists. <laughs> Frankly, when, I, when it comes to power and privilege, I know that I am near the top of the food chain, and you should know that because of your elected office, so are you. You may know that Jesus said, to those who much has been given, much shall be expected of me and of you. I'm here because Gil Condon died in his tent. I'm here because Debbie Sprague died in her car in our church safe parking program. I'm here because every time Chris gets released, he comes to sleep on the porch of the church. I'm here because this morning I picked up Jennifer's clothes and HIV medications in the bushes at the church. I'm here because Danny and Trevor are sleeping in the church courtyard again tonight. And they'll be glad to see me in the morning when I unlock the building and invite them to come inside and get warm and to stretch out in a space that's not so cramped on concrete. I'm here because these are my siblings, and they deserve better. They deserve better from me, they deserve better from us, and they deserve better from you. I'm gonna come over here so I can see you guys better. Hi, Shama, I used to be your neighbor. Shama, sorry about the K, there's no K. <laughs> Sally K. I'm Amy and I live um, in District 8 with my two young children, uh, two boys I'm very proud of, they're six and eight years old. Um, in 2012, me and my two children, aged eight months and three years old, were told by our landlord in Bellevue that we were not going to have our lease renewed. We put our furniture into storage and hit the streets of downtown Seattle so that we could be close to the majority of the homeless services. We slept in Tashkent Park. We lived at Nicholsville on the marginal way for three months the YWCA for six months. Finally, in 2013, we found a landlord in Leshai who would rent to us. We thrived there for a year and a half. In November 2014, the landlord sold the property to a new owner who would renovate and raise the rent. Unable to find housing, I viewed a dozen places, but no one would take us with my felony, lack of credit, and housing voucher. We moved back to Nicholsville, this time at Dearborn, for two months. In November and October, in the rain. We got into Broadview Shelter for one month. Then we found housing again in the Central District. We lived there for six months until the landlord sold the property to someone who would renovate and raise the rent. In 2015, we found a place in Beacon Hill that was run down, but hey, it beat being in a tent. So we lived there for 19 months. In October 2016, the landlord sold the property to a new owner who raised the rent $500 in a bid to force out 40 families so that they could renovate the units and raise the rent. You could wrap up, please. I have like two more sentences, if that's okay. We found another apartment in March of this year on Perth Hill where we still reside. What is the effect of all these moves on me and my children? We suffer from severe PTSD and nightmares every night. I'm here to urge you to put some of your funds into a rapid rehousing program to prevent other people from having to go through what we have in the last five years. Thank you.
other council members heard, unless they have some hearing issues, I think they heard the same thing I heard, which was an unrelenting and unstoppable message to stop the sweeps, pass the homes tax, and for safe consumption spaces to save lives. There you go. Trash. 
You've got millions to provide services of every kind that will allow homeless people to transition quickly into homeless And you know, it's not just us who are demanding that big business be taxed. Today, there was an Amazon warehouse worker who said that Jeff Bezos, who has now become the richest man in the entire world, is rich on the backs of his workers who are grossly underpaid. So we have Amazon workers speaking up, Amazon warehouse workers speaking up and saying, I want Amazon executives to be taxed. I'll just add one more thing. I know a lot of people have also heard that Mayor Burgess may uh, decide to veto if we have, uh, you know, if we have uh, stop the sweeps, if we, if we have home stacks and so on. Let's not buy into this fear mongering. Yeah. 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 If we pass, if we, if our movement is able to wrest a concession from the city council and we actually win these demands, it is not going to be that easy for the political establishment to get that back because they will pay a price for that as well. And our movement should and can make sure that they will pay that price. And so don't, don't ever believe that everything is etched in stone. The ultimate results of political, uh, you know, political you know, events really depends on a balance of forces. There's the Chamber of Commerce, Amazon, corporate lobbyists, and the politicians on one side, and there's the people and the elected representatives who support the people on the other. Which side wins depends on which side can be stronger. We don't have the billions of dollars, but we do have the majority of the city on our side. That's why we have so many people who have showed up today.